or something that you have an interest in, but what are your skill sets in? When I talk about being passionate about something, you need to think about something that you can operate at a minimum at the top 3% in the entire world. And that means regardless of whether someone has more degrees, they have, a, they have a better pedigree than you, they have more work experience or relationship, what can you, what area can you actually own? And that's, what, and that's the mindset that I want you to think about as you begin to think about developing your person and positioning yourself for success. The problem needs to be bigger than you. So unless your mother is Oprah Winfrey, the problem needs to be something that's bigger than just something that is interest of your actual mother. And then also think about the problem that is solved. Not only the problem that is solved, but now what is the business about? How does this idea make money? What are the revenue streams for the idea so that that idea can make money? Bill Gates makes $7,053, I think, a minute, if I looked at that crap. I think so he positioned himself so that people see enough value that that's what it equates to. Life is not just about making money, but I want to be able to make the correlation between doing something where people see value and there being some type of return on the other end. When you think about a brand, what you really want to do is that you want to create avenues. You want to get people who are so excited about what you do that they're going out and they're sharing and they're communicating that with their communities. So when you think about brands, some of the things that that really um, demonstrate how uh, how how excited people are about the product and service, the things that you do, is that say for instance, if you're a musician or if you have or if you are an author, they could download your book as an ebook, right? They could go purchase products, whether you are in a physical location or if there's something that's online. They can share the ideas with their community, right? They can help to spread the ideas that you actually have without you having to force them to be able to do it. They could also occupy a space in your co-working facility, right? Because again, you might have a location where you're trying to bring businesses in. So this is a way that you can see that people are really interested or companies are interested in the services or the things that you actually do. They're willing to pay a premium for the, for the services that you offer. See, at the end of the day, if you're just a commodity, then you're battling other companies based on price. But when you're in a position where people are willing to pay a premium because they see enough value in what you do, there's nothing like being an entrepreneur and being, I mean, and seeing and seeing people purchase product that you make or purchase the service. There's nothing like when I'm walking around and you know, and my iPhone, and I get a notification from PayPal or Google Wallet. I mean, I get excited when that stuff comes because I can see the money coming in, right? So there's nothing like seeing a cash register ring or when companies call you because they want to bring you in to do work and to do and to do things with them. So again, I want you to think about what are the revenue streams? What are the ways to be able to demonstrate that there are that there are people that want to become advocates for who you are and uh, and the stuff that you're actually working on? Um, brands, personal brands fall into one or two categories, builders or leapers. So if you're a builder, you're building somebody else's dream while you're building your own resume. So you have to think about how you're wired. Are you wired to work for someone else? There's nothing wrong with it. You can be extremely successful. You can also be a leaper. This is one of my favorite people right here, Seth Doe. He's a virtual mentor of mine. He doesn't even know it, but he mentors me every single day. Right? So again, a leaper is someone who has made a decision to now become a pure entrepreneur and to do what they do full time and to make that decision. What most people do is that most people operate in this position right here, and it's called grustle. And the grustle is a grind and a hustle. So that means that you have a day job that you that you that you work for a nine to five, where you then fund the side hustle that you have. But at the end of the day, what I really want you to think about is how do you pivot to your passion? How do you do what you truly love doing? Whether that's taking another opportunity inside of an existing organization, or whether it's now starting to run your own company, whether it's a startup, or doing something that you love to actually do. But getting you to think about how do you pivot to the thing that you were really created to do. We used to once say, are you an entrepreneur or not? That's not the right question to ask. The question is whether you're going to be an entrepreneur inside the company or outside the company, because you have to think entrepreneurs. You have to think with your head up and not just with your head down, right? 
So at the end of the day, what I want you to think about from a personal brand standpoint is I want you to think about how do you become a thought leader in the space that you're in. You want to position yourself to become a thought leader, the person that people want to go to to be able to solve problems. So one of the main points we're going to talk about from a brand standpoint is you have, you have the ability to become a tremendous storyteller. Every single, being a storyteller is a learned behavior. So that means that you have the ability to be able to communicate the idea, the things that are important to you. Why? Because brands are stories. Not only are brands stories, but people make an emotional connection with the brand. I mean, if Coca-Cola can communicate their ideas and they sell sugar and water, whatever idea that you have should not, it probably won't decay people's teeth and you can probably still make a viable living doing it. So again, you have to think about how do you communicate that story. The person that gets the opportunity is not necessarily the smartest person. It's not necessarily the person who, you know, who has the best grade, but in many cases, do you have the ability to be able to tell a better story? So your story is going to be told online. Your story is going to be told in, um, in your bio. So if we were to look at, if we look at this, is a very old screenshot, but this is a Twitter bio that I have. Part of what I think about in terms of 160 characters to, you know, to communicate something in my body. So I try to put things in there that will position me to be an influencer. So I try to put stuff that I'm doing with TED, CNN, and other stuff. But I also link people to other stuff. So sometimes I see files without links, right? So, there's, so that means that you're not telling your full story. There's the opportunity to be connected to a city. I've seen people that say that they're worldwide. Well. There's value in being and having some kind of connection to some type of geographical location. So again, I put a city in there. I don't put Birmingham in there because because I go to a conference and people think I'm from Alabama, right? So I put Detroit because Detroit is the brand that people recognize in this particular market. So again, this is an opportunity for you to be able to tell your story. And so think about that in terms of the photos that you share, the experiences that people have in terms of being able to connect with you because that's part of you being able to tell your story. What channels do you need to be in, right? So again, you become a storyteller and you are curating the actual story. The next point that I want to focus on is social proof. At the end of the day, we live in a day and in an era where social proof really is the order of the day. So at the end of the day, you can have a resume and you can tell people I do this, you can tell people that I code, but who cares? People want to look at what have you actually done. So we're going to look at a gentleman, and his name is Frank Shamir. He is a designer based in Brooklyn, New York. So now, he came out with a book that's called The Shape of Design. The Shape of Design. So now, if I was a publisher, and I was looking for great authors or someone that I could bring in, Frank would be an individual that I was looking at. And so we're going to look at a screenshot from his, from his, uh, Kickstarter page. His goal was to raise $27,000. Frank raised over $112,000 for that book. So what that tells me also is that he had 2,109 people back the idea. Now, I guarantee you Frank does not know 2,109 people that he's physically met in the real world that are his friends. So it, so it communicates that he's able to galvanize a community. It also communicates this, that he's able to market his idea. He's able to do some things to be able to get people behind the idea and raise 100. And I don't care what book you pick. He actually printed the book did not cost $112,000. I don't care if it gold pages. And full, I mean, the book didn't cost $112,000. So I think Frank made a nice little cut after he did the book, right? So I want to kind of just go online real quick and actually show you something. I know we're getting close to our Q&A component, but I think this would be kind of cool. Uh, we do, let's see, Frank Shamiro, and we do Kickstarter, because he has a cool little page, and I'll show you some of the things that are on his page. So if we click that, the internet works. We'll look at some of his updates, because again, this is part of him telling his story, part of the social proof piece of it, right? So look at it, that's a real cool design, right? But if we look at Frank, if you look at Frank right here, Frank has the cool little boots on, right? That, because that's part of the design feel. Frank has the manicure. I mean, you can look at the wood floor in the background. Frank is communicating this story, right? 
Frank also has Fido reading the book, so so we already know that this book has to be a very interesting book because Fido loves the book. But this is part of him communicating that story. We already know that if you put bacon cats, you know, in a video and in photos, that's gonna blow up, right? So Frank is already on it, and he know, and he's telling that story so that people can connect with the story. So again, I want you to think about when you're doing it. You can put out a Kickstarter platform, but that is work. You can't just put it out there and think that it's automatically going to sell. He's telling a compelling story and putting together information so that people want to connect with the idea that he actually has. So again, social proof becomes the order of the day. So now he's able to clearly communicate what it is that he does. I really spoke at the palace. And there were 10,000 people there. So now, as an example, I can put in my resume that I spoke to 10,000 people. That doesn't necessarily mean it, right? I mean, I could be lying, maybe, you know, they might have to have some way to be able to validate it. So looking at some other ways that now show social proof. Now we have the photos that we're working on with me speaking and tweeting from the stage where I'm communicating that that was me and I'm, and I'm sharing that experience. So part of what I want you to think about, how do you create social proof in terms of the stuff that you actually do? And I'll run through these quick points so we can then open up the floor for Q&A. From a brand standpoint, I want you to think about three things. Location, location, location. So the first thing is I want you to think about how do you own mental real estate? How do you become the only solution in the mind of your end customer? So when they need opportunity, when they need you, or they need to work with someone who has the, um, the skill set that you have or the organization that you bring to the table that you become the solution in the mind of that particular customer. Next, digital real estate. You have to think about owning digital real estate. Think about what, what does your digital footprint look like, right? So when people go to find you, it clearly communicates exactly what it is that you want people to find out about. You need to be optimized to mobile. You need to be consistent in terms of all the channels that you're at on Line. The third thing is geographical real estate. You want to be the solution in your local market. Lots of times people want to be able to connect with major media outlets that are national, but what they look for is that they look for local stores. And I'll give you a quick example as I close. So I tend to do some stuff with CNN, you know, so we're part of an accelerator. And so, and so, but what they were looking for is that they end up finding eight entrepreneurs that that were from around the nation, and I just happened to be one. Now, what I always tell people is that they, is that they took the smartest people and they put us right next to Soledad. That. So that's why I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. Your left, my right. I don't think it had anything to do with the fact that I had glass, though, right? So, so again, um, and it could be. But at the end of the day, how do you turn these opportunities, how do you turn the local opportunity? When I was trying to connect with all of the with all the news anchors locally, I did a blog post. And I did a blog post talking about all of the local news anchors. At the end of the day, I wanted the news anchors to know who I was. And that's why I did the post. I tweeted, put your handles in there, and I was meeting them, and it worked. But at the end of the day, if I told them my name was Hyde, and I, and I don't know who I am, nobody cares. But if I'm talking about them, they're retweeting it, they're sharing it, they're you know, favoring it, and all the other kind of stuff, I'm like, this is working perfectly. Because again, I'm talking about them, but we're creating this connection without me really pushing myself out there from that particular standpoint. So again, I want you to think about, so we talked about today, uh, we talked about telling your story and about creating social proof, which is a big thing that we really, really focused on. And I want to open up the floor for the steps because at the end of the day, what a brand is, is that a brand should be a shortcut. Brands should be shortcuts in terms of helping people to be able to make economic decisions. Brands should be guarantees, uh, and you should be able to position yourself for what it is that you want to do. So now let's open up the floor for questions. Even though I'm, I know I saw world peace and hunger already, we want to go ahead and see if there's any other questions in between those. Okay. So we have a mic. I think we do. Who's got a question? I'll bring the mic to you. Who's got a question for Hodge? Where's being shy? <laughs> Oh, oh, in the back. All right, hold on, come back there. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hi. Um, you talked about getting one idea that you're passionate about. What if you have the opposite problem where you have too many ideas and you can't focus on each one? That's a great question. So what if you have multiple ideas? 
most people have more than one idea, right? Um, I know I have multiple ideas that I get on my wife's nerves because every day, because I'm a, I'm a vision, so I have multiple things I want to work on. What I believe becomes important is that, is, that, is that you have to be known for something, and you have to be anchored to something specific. And I think that once you're successful doing that, it gives you the ability to be able to leverage that for other stuff. So I'll use an example. So Jay-Z started out doing music. So Jay-Z is married to Beyonce, right? So I'm going to go that's his claim to fame right now. But he started out in music. So that has went on over into apparel, ownership with the Nets, which he's divesting in currently. And now, and now he's becoming a sports agent. And he's in the process of signing Kevin Durant, Skylar Diggins, and all these other things. But he started out in music, so music was his linchpin. That was the main thing that he started with, and now he's been able to leverage that into other stuff. So I believe that you need to start with something specific, and also you need to think about, you don't want to confuse people. I've met people that have come up to me with a business card where they were a, they cut hair, they did website design, they did lawn, they were photographers. I was like, really? You do all that stuff? So that let me know that that individual wasn't good at anything. So I'll focus on something first, and then, um, um, and then, and then leverage that for other stuff. Great. Next question. Hi, I'm aware that you don't build a brand by yourself. Can you talk a little bit about maybe how you use others or get out testimonials or others to help you build your brand? That's a great question. Personal brands, in my personal opinion, are not scalable, right? So, so that means that you know you get to a point to where you're trading dollars for hours, and there, and we all have a defined amount of hours in the day. So when you think about scaling a company or scaling it beyond just you, you now have to think about what are what are some of the ways that I'm going to be able to do that? So some things is that, is that over time I've been able to develop good relations with people where I've been able to outsource certain, certain, certain skill sets or certain services. But also over time, building those relationships with companies so that now it creates more opportunity for future stuff. So say for instance, when we do conferences, there are certain sponsors that we have. Those sponsors allow us to then be able to leverage those sponsors to be able to get other sponsorships. Um, I mean, I've done some stuff, you know, with Pitney Bowles, so that gave me an opportunity to be able to create some content there and to do certain stuff with their particular intern program that I can now then leverage to work with Pfizer and work with other major corporations. So what I've always done is, how can I take this opportunity and then create it so I can then leverage it for something else? When I was working on commitment for OCC, they had a rule out that no student could bring a cell phone to the palace who was graduating. I said, that's crazy. I said, this is an opportunity, it's a brand opportunity. So then I began to work on how I could then take that so I could now leverage that so we could show the social capital that comes from that so I could use that for another opportunity. So every time you do something, it's an opportunity to be able to take that and then to repackage it or repurpose it to be able to create other opportunities. And in a relationship that you develop from there, whether it's getting testimonials, whether it's getting letters, whether it's being able to put the logo on your website, can be ways that you can then leverage it so you can grow um, and also change the perception that people have of whatever it is that you actually do. And I'll go to another website as we, as we get the next question. I know we have about six minutes. I want to I actually show you something while we're here. Okay. I was thanks for being here. Um, great stuff. I have a question. Uh, in branding yourself, what would you say your brand guarantee is? Okay. My brand guarantee really is that is that I'm truly focused on helping people to be able to live their dreams and to do work that matters. And so what I focus on is really helping people to be able to figure it out. And so, and so when I travel, my whole goal is really helping people to do what they love to do. Bottom line. And so again, um, and I'm able to do it because I'm able to do it through my own story. I was doing something that I didn't love to do, and then I had to reposition myself because every agency that I went to, no one, no one, no one was interested in an engineer with MBA. I mean, I mean, I was, I was going to agency after agency, and I, and I couldn't get the opportunity that I wanted. So then, I had to then start doing other stuff so that I could fill that skill gap. So if you're looking to do something else and there's a gap, how do you, how do you address it? 
you know, how do you now position yourself so you can get the opportunity? So that's what I'm focused on. Go ahead. Um, as far as um, um, ownership, because I know you have the online marketing tools, what do you view as being um, the things that you would do first for a creating brand? Okay. So what are some things that I would do first? One of the things that I would do first is that is that I would want to own digital real estate that relates back to whatever product or service that I do. So, so I would look at a site called Noam.com. So Noam, it's right here. One way that I would start here. So say for instance, you can look up four to five hundred different. Uh, back up. Okay. So you can look up four to five hundred different um, social network URLs. You can look up .com. So I would want to own the digital real estate for whatever it is that I was looking to go out there and actually bring. That would that be one of the first things I do. I would want to own the conversation, right? Because again, you can own certain .com, but someone else can own that conversation online. And then what I would want to do is I would, I would really want to be consistent in terms of being in a certain space and I would want to do certain things to, to create credibility for myself, whether it's write a book or do other things. One thing that I did was write a book, right? So again, you want to do things that are going to create credibility for you in that particular space or in that particular market. So those are a couple of small, quick points. Hey, okay, Hunch, yeah. um, I don't know if you saw the article on GQ yesterday about Instagram and sharing. Where it talks about, and I think you touched on it, how people always share glamorous things. So they share when they're sitting by the pool, or they share these fancy cocktails, but then the other six nights of the week they're sitting home with a six pack watching Family Guy. <laughs> and, and it talks about how people are undersharing. So they only share these things that look like they're partying and vacationing. How do, how do you deal with that? How do you kind of let people in, show them a little bit of the true story, and then a little bit of the image that you want to convey? How do you mix that? Well, I think you have to you. As a matter of fact, we'll go to my Instagram page. So. So we'll go here so you can see. Um, but I think people people have a radar for garbage, right? You know, you know, so they know that you're not doing business 24 hours a day. They know that you have a human side to who you are. And I think that when you know you're able to let your hair down, if you have hair, right? You know, where you can where you can still show interesting stuff. So this is me on the swing. I don't think it actually blows up. But I'm looking crazy on the swing with my daughter. But I mean, but I thought that was just a cool picture. We're out at the park and we're having fun. So again, it shows that I'm not out making a billion dollars speaking, you know, at this great event. I'm a family person too. So again, part of what I think is important is that people want to be able to connect with you and know that you are real. And so again, there are ways to do it without being overly transparent and show things that would maybe discredit your brand. So again, think about things that, that show a work-life balance and also things that you're gonna be able to feel comfortable with that you won't have to then try to try to come back and have to compensate for because maybe it communicates something that's negative. You'll never see me put up stuff that, you know, that's gonna be uh, character-driven stuff that could that could undermine our brand. We're gonna time for one more, one last question. Um, what's your favorite Seth Godin book? My favorite Seth Godin book is uh, in Lynchpin. Lynchpin. I mean, uh, he, you know, that is, um, that book to me is it, a tremendous book. But my favorite, favorite book and my favorite author um, is Malcolm Gladwell. Um, so, so my favorite book that he has is uh, in Outline. Um, he talks about the 10,000 hours in there. Um, so. So he's my favorite author. Seth Godin is is, uh, is my favorite person that I follow online because he breaks every single rule, does what he loves to do, and he's created what he calls scarcity. So now he's positioning himself so that he can do the stuff that he wants to work on. Seth is not going to get on the plane and just fly somewhere just because just because there's an event because he doesn't need to do that. Anymore. And again, that's the position that I want to do. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's give Hodge Fleming a big round of applause. Thank you, Hodge. That was a very inspiring talk. And I think, uh, who learned something today? Who learned something very good? Yeah, I think we all learned something. So now we get to go around the room. It's 12.45. We always like to finish by one. So in 15 minutes, we get to go around the room and everybody goes.
didn't get put it in hold. I didn't mention it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I turned it over. I didn't have that in a while. You couldn't have that in a while. Yeah, the sound system's a little glitchy. No, no. Yeah, you just turn on the mic. Turn the, turn this back on. I do the same thing. No, it wasn't a problem. He turned it off, which causes the feedback. Test, test, test. Mic back on. The handheld we need. Test, test, test. Hello, hello, hello. We need mic power. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to go out of the room in 15 minutes and introduce ourselves. Um, briefly, who you are, your company, and if you're looking for anything, and keep it short, then we'll, we ask you also stand up when you introduce yourself. We'll start with Colin in front. Hi, Colin Thomas, uh, marketing for MLive Media Group, which includes MLive.com and AnnHubber.com. I'm a senior advertising major, 
interested in digital media and strategy. And I guess I'm going to have to talk to you to figure out how to get that free college money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Lorenz. I am a uh, marketing major at Eastern, not an intern at Gen X. <laughs> uh, I'm doing some work with some nonprofit organizations. And, uh, in about a year, I'll be graduating and looking for some marketing work. Hi, I'm Tasha Moore with Montopia, which is a marketing and public relations firm that uh, really helps companies gain strategic distinction. I'm Tori Rexford. I do community outreach in Governor Snyder's office, and we recently just announced the Do Something Michigan campaign, trying to get people more active in the local communities and promoting all the positive things that are going on on a local level. Hi, I'm Christian Ward. I'm head of dealer and consumer education with On, the Swiss running shoe company. Hi, I'm Kathy Szynski, and I do several things in marketing. Um, first, I work with the students at uh, the University of Michigan, the Michigan Daily, Michigan Enzyme, and Gargoyle on their sales and marketing efforts. And I also teach in the IMC program, online program at Eastern. I am uh, Jim Campbell from ExcitingProductions.com and uh, video customer testimonials can be a very powerful way to tell your story and I invite you to see how we've helped many people uh, tell their video customer testimony on our website and YouTube channel, ExcitingProductions.com. Hi, I'm Caroline. Um, I'm graduating in December from the University of Michigan in uh, Communications and Sociology and right now I'm just checking out marketing this summer. My name is Justin Gibson, uh, I'm from Sam and Payne in Ann Arbor, we do sales training and coaching, uh, but we're starting up a, a program in July for um, customer service individuals, and so uh, it'll help customer service individuals who are struggling with the skills to cross-sell and upsell, or um, who are also struggling with the, the soft skills that it takes to, uh, to deal with difficult customers and so forth. <coughs> I'm Bud Gibson. I created the Search Marketing Program at Eastern Michigan University. Our students have worked with over 90 local nonprofits, helping them develop their pay-per-click advertising campaigns. This summer, my focus is on helping them develop their personal brands as they go out to the marketplace and try and sell themselves. Need help with your digital marketing? Come talk to us. I'm Mark Creech. I'm the webmaster at Internet 2. I'm Roger Rail. I'm a venture catalyst, uh, help uh, with the video here and several other uh, meetup groups around. Um, our, uh, I started this video interest group uh, back in January, so our June meeting is tonight at Cubs AC, 6.30. Anybody interested in video or needing video services in any way? Um, this Friday's the Green Fair down right here on Main Street in Washington and Liberty. Uh, so I'll have a booth down here talking about a local groundwater contamination. And it's also the uh, first night of Summerfest. You know, for Summerfest for you that don't know, it's, uh, it's like three weeks of fun and music and movies. Hi, I'm Erin O'Neill. I am a content producer at Ingenix Digital Marketing as well as one of the LA2M live tweeters. Hi, I'm Lauren Schneider. I, too, am one of the LA2M live tweeters and also social media coordinator at Ingenix. Hello there. Um, I'm Ashley. I'm a content producer at Ingenix, um, also a resident cuttlefish. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Mary Lou. I'm uh, the LA2M manager. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. really appreciate that. Um, and just uh, to reiterate about the sponsorship, we also uh, publish a couple of newsletters during the summertime, so if you're thinking it's too late for June, it really is not because we can include you in, in our summer publications. We are already sold out for sponsorships for September, October, and November. So we, these people really do see a value in these. Um, and also, uh, we're planning our schedule for fall for speakers, so if, uh, if you know someone that you'd like to recommend as a speaker, we, we'd like to hear from you. Thanks. 
Hello, my name is Sandy Sayre, and I would say um, a recovering educator probably right now. Um, I'm also a mediator, uh, and I'm in the process of rebranding myself as, at this time of my life. Hi, my name is Sue Shoemaker, and I think I came the furthest. I came from Brown City, Michigan this morning, which is up in the Thumb area. I live on a farm. I also am an educator who is going through the process of rebranding. I am a certified tour director, so I get paid to travel, which is kind of fun now, since I spent 38 and a half years in the same middle school um, and survived. Um, but anyway, um, really enjoyed the presentation today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carter Sherman from Prince Studios. I'm a commercial editorial portrait photographer. Uh, I guess as I'm saying I'm known for shooting runnings of Grand Dexter and Arbor are one of any races the last few weeks. You probably saw me because of the other way looking at you. Maybe with a video camera and a scope camera on each hand. Uh, I'm doing a lot of that lately. Um, and uh, pictures of these meetings go up on the group's Facebook page. Thank you, Carter. And my name is Derek, CEO of Ingenix Digital Marketing. We have a lot of incredible interns and people that come from our company who are incredible too. And I'm not sure where the cuttlefish is, but it sounds oh, they're positive. they're awesome. Everyone on YouTube cuttlefish. There's D's instead of T's. Okay, cuttlefish with D's. Okay, everybody YouTube that. We can read about it later. But um, yeah, we're a full service digital marketing agency, so we do web design, we do social media, and paid search and search optimization. So, um, and you from Eastern, it's not too late for an internship if you want one. <laughs> Kidding, you said you weren't an intern yet. But um, anyway, so thanks for coming. Wow, what a, what a great talk. I mean, I really, I love today's talk. You know, you can tell that Hodge has gone out and spoken to 10,000 people because he's a great natural speaker. So let's give him one last round of applause. up and talk to him afterwards, get your picture with him. He, 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 this picture, it's like, it's like I want to be like Mike. I think he's a really good role model. I love, I love his imagery. And I guess it's mostly him, so I don't know what that means, but he's, he's photogenic. But um, next week, next week, I guess I'm kind of speaking. Well, it's an open forum. So next week is going to be all about marketing a startup. So if you have a startup business, if you know anyone with a startup business, I'm going to kind of lead a discussion on an open forum on how to market startups. That could be a web app, it could be a virtual company, it could be a real company. So it'll be an interactive forum. Hodge did a really good job of getting everyone to interact. Hopefully we can do that next week as well. And I think we'll learn a lot as opposed to a regular structured presentation. It was Mary Lou's idea. She's a great uh, idea person. And she's our LA to manager, so she does a lot of the hard work here. And that's one of the things that we cover with our um, pass in the basket. So anyways, you guys go out, have a great week, go make some money. And uh, bring a friend next week. It's going to be a great time. So thanks for coming. See you later.